everyone. This is Brittany Bond, and welcome back to the podcast. Um, today, I am super excited to just vibe with you and talk about why so many people feel disconnected today and how we can actually create more space and more opportunities for connection, for love, for all the juiciness that you come to me to hear about you know all these stories that you come and you listen to me talk about like these dating stories and I just find that for me this is the juicy part of life like the things that we really we really 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 care about <laughs> and we go to work every day and we're just like doo, doo, doo. you know like I gotta pay my bills I gotta do things in the 3d but what we really <clears throat> really crave in our heart of hearts is this feeling of connection to ourselves to each other <clears throat> to our higher self and I need to drink some water so I invite you on that note to take a deep breath I just want to be straight up with you that I have days where I wake up and I feel this like longing in my soul for a beingness that I have experienced in the past, this beingness of feeling completely in tribe, being completely surrounded by my people, everyone I love, my heart just lights up when I see them. And you know, I've had moments of this in my life. I've had long periods of this in my life where we would wake up and it doesn't matter. It's, a, it's not about when are we going to hang out or if we're going to hang out. It's where are we going to hang out. Uh, and usually it was at my house or at a very close friend's house or at a coffee shop and we would all meet up and we would just spend most of the day together. You know, and people would be working and they would be doing whatever they needed to do on the side, but it was like this... No one wanted to leave the beingness. It was the beingness of being in this tribe together in this deep, close-knit community of people who love each other. And com community is an interesting word. We throw this word around a lot. <laughs> I do a lot because I feel like there is this outer community of, yes, I would love for all of us to be in connection as a tr worldwide tribe. You know, like that we're, we all get it. We're all here to take care of the earth and to be in symbiosis and unity with each other and the earth and what's best for the earth. And also, we have special souls, special to us, that we have had many lifetimes with. We've had, you know, an eternity in spirit with. And we've chosen to come down and incarnate at the same moment in time here on this earth. And when we find each other, it's like, ah, oh, I just feel so at home with this person and I feel like they get me and we are on the same mission of, a lot of, for me, in my specific timeline, this is the mission of being a light worker, starseed, whatever you want to call it, where we are here to set our vibration really strong and really bright out into the world so that others can realize it's safe for them to shine it's safe for them to be their authentic selves so for me my tribe is people who are already doing this they're already on mission they're already fully and loudly their authentic selves and they are expressing this in whatever way feels yummy in their bodies, whatever way is exciting for them, whatever way they're growing in that moment. And we just do it together. You know, we just go through life together, supporting each other and witnessing and honoring each other in our journeys. This is the beauty of tribe. This is the beauty of soul family. And... Um, I also notice that as I grow myself, some people call it raising your vibration. There's also some negative connotation around raising your vibration because sometimes people use this as a, what do they call it? Getting a spiritual ego where you think you're better than everyone else. I want to put it in like my most authentic way is there has been many moments in my life where I have, I am what I call a growth junkie. Like I'm here to 
release whatever karma I have in this timeline. I feel very strongly this is one of my last lifetimes on this earth. And also this one is a very exciting one because we are in the transformational age. Like things are happening. <laughs> things are happening that have never happened before in the timeline. And it's very exciting. And I feel so strongly that it's really important for me to always be my authentic self and always be in my truth and all and that means always be growing so i have no no i'm not scared of the darkness this is also a lot of my scorpio energy i know that in the darkness of the unknown is where we find ourselves even deeper even more, even more deeply and it is where the new light comes up you know in our lives i'm saying this in a very metaphorical way but what I'm trying to say is there has been a lot of times where I outgrow my friend group. Like I look around and they just are not in the same mode of where I want to be. So either our interests change and they're still in the interests that they have been in while I was with them and it was great, but I outgrew it. Or I notice that, you know, I am shifting my energy to focus on things. Usually like I'm not interested in what they are interested in anymore and I'm shifting my energy to focus on something new. And for a long time, especially in my 20s, I was shifting this a lot because I was trying out a lot of different things and figuring out what was my sole purpose, what was the thing I was the most excited about. And now that I know this, it's a lot easier for me to be in alignment with who I know will be in alignment with my life mission. So I like to choose my friends in a way where they're also on the same mission. And so for me, it's community, it is embodiment, um, it is feeling safe to be our fully sexualized beings in whatever way that means for each of us, but just to feel really like owning what our truth is for our bodies and to understand that for me, the mission is to build our community and to understand that we need to be in unity with the earth and not to focus on all the things that are happening behind us to me that's the old earth it's like they can just be in their little soup of whatever negative emotions and fear they want to do like that's i honor that i honor that's how some people are choosing to grow their consciousness for me I've already gone through a lot of that in my own way and in many other timelines. So for me, it's here to focus on the new and to build the new and to really be creating that space within myself and within my energy field where I'm not distracted. I'm not clouding myself by all the old stuff. I am just fully here and have my energy focused on what I'm building in the new, this new earth, this now earth that's happening now. And that has been really beautiful because now I'm attracting in a lot of souls. And sometimes these are people that I've known for years, but I didn't realize that we were both, you know, aligning ourselves into the same specific soul mission. And I think it's really important to honor that you can have people in your life that have nothing to do with your soul mission and you just love them and you love vibing with them. And if they, by being their authentic selves and creating space for you to be your authentic self is helping empower you just to keep going in the timeline and keep your mission going amazing i also find that it's really beautiful to align with people who are on your specific soul mission and if you don't know what that is yet that's great just keep exploring um what i have found is that a lot of my friends who are on a very specific soul mission of building community you know eco villages new earth and and also just they're they're just like not so much of them are here on Copenhagen. And in the past I would go to Europe and visit all of them in the summer and then come back in the winter and like kind of you know, a lot of them would come here for a little bit in the winter and we would hop back and forth. Um, what my soul is really craving right now is to have all of us live in the same spot, like physically. And I have been having a lot of dreams about this because I've traveled all over the world. I love traveling. I think it's beautiful. And a lot of my friends are on this sole mission of finding the community they want to support that is what they believe is the New Earth mission. And it's like, 
finding an existing community. And what I've always known for myself, at least for my timeline is we are the community, you know, like we don't need to go find someone else. Like we just, we just build it. We just get together and it already happens because I don't want to build my life with people I don't know just because they happen to have the same vision of an eco village this is what I see a lot happening in the world right now is people are like, eco-villages, new earth, we all believe the same thing, but do you actually like each other? <laughs> do you actually want to raise your kids together? Just because you have the same vision doesn't mean that you're going to vibe every day. Like, I would rather get all of my soul family together who I have vibed with for six, seven, ten years and get us all in one place and we already all love each other and we just figure it out together, you know? And I know it will happen. I know it's happening. I just wanted to share that if you are feeling alone, if you are feeling one of the only one who understands your specific soul mission and like that you can vibe with, it's okay and it's normal, especially right now in the timeline when all of us are spread across the world in a specific grid in order to light up. There's actually something called being a grid worker and because the, the earth itself has its own electromagnetic magnetic field and certain ones of us are drawn to specific locations or our soul was born in a specific location so that we can literally by our soul being there activate the grid of the vibration and raise the vibration in that specific geographical area i had a channel that i'm actually one of these grid workers and this is why I have traveled to over 60 countries and lived abroad, lived out of my home country for over 10 years because there's been so many times where I've been in a place and I'm like, why am I here? Like, what? Am, there's no physical mind reason why I'm here, but it feels so good to be here. And then I end up meeting amazing people and vibing and I realize later, oh, I was just meant to to be this beacon of light and show these people that it's possible to live whatever life you want and be your authentic self and da 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 all the things. Um... And this is why I'm also feeling called to go to Japan. I've never been to Japan. It's been on my list. And I don't have any specific reason to go to Japan, except for I'm really excited to eat all the food and experience the culture and go shopping. Uh, and also, I feel that there is a very specific spiritual reason why I'm being called there. And that's really beautiful to listen to. So um, I'm going all over the place right now. But what I'm trying to say to you is that just keep listening to your higher self. Keep connecting to your source connection your higher self in whatever meditative way that means for you and it's okay if there's times where you feel this disconnection and of course this is where we are growing our vibration a lot by s witnessing who we are in the timeline and also it's okay if you you are realizing that you becoming your authentic self more and more equals shifting friend groups like you can still love people you can separate with love you can just fade away and end up not hanging out as much or you can hang out with them but what i've noticed talking to a lot of you recently doing the human design readings and just my general coaching that i do is that there's this moment of <laughs> realization that when you become your authentic self you might not vibe with the people you grew up with or the people you've been friends with for a really long time or even your biological family and then there's this moment of like, ah, what do I do? Like, do I be dramatic and separate all the way? And I always say, separate with love. You don't even need to be dramatic. You don't need to be dramatic. But as long as you're honoring yourself and honoring your boundaries and also just create space to be alone more so that you can set your specific vibration. Because in order to draw in the people that you are you're meant to be around right now for your highest growth and for the connection that you need in order to keep going, like to be supported emotionally, spiritually, all the ways. Um, you have to really radiate your vibration in a clean and clear way. And what I notice happening is a lot of us light workers, as we start waking up to our mission, we start looking around and realizing that people are literally energetically hooked into us and they're draining our energy in s different ways. And a lot of it is not conscious. A lot of it, they mean the best and they're amazing people. It's our boundaries that we need to set. And it's also us saying, hey, I need some time for myself so that I can, so that I can really 
allow myself to settle into my own vibration. Like this is what this lunar eclipse was, is like a lot of us setting this, I need to put myself first. Like this big signal that a lot of us have gotten in different ways. I need to put myself first. I need to take care of myself because when I do this, then I have the energy to help other people. So I really invite you to look at every connection that you have in your life and ask yourself, is this a connection that is supporting me? Is this empowering me? Do I actually feel more energy after I hang out with this person or this family member? Or do I feel drained? Is this like me being of service? And if it's the latter, if it's you being of service, then I really invite you to, well, one, look at it and really honor that's what's happening because sometimes we don't want to consciously recognize this is what's happening because then we realize we have to do something about it. <laughs> um, and there's many more options than being dramatic when you want to do something about it. It could just be that you end up hanging out with them less or you say, I need to tell them I need to spend some more time by myself or you know, you start speaking these boundaries and you can even say what it is that you feel in your body. But I'll tell you that a lot of people, this is where they start saying that you have a spiritual ego if you, if you speak it to them. And I don't think this is, everyone's allowed to have their own journey of waking up. And I have friends that I grew up with that I've known since I was nine years old and I love them so much. And they are living a very normal life in California and just doing normal things and not waking up spiritually and I still love them and I still keep in touch with them and it's okay. Do I hang out with them every day? Do I spend a lot of energy with them? No, because I recognize that every energy exchange, every interaction that I'm having with someone, it either is going to amplify me and help me focus on my mission of what I'm meant to be doing here or nourish my soul in some way. So I'm saying like, even if people are not on your specific soul mission, if they are nourishing your soul and you leave them feeling more connected to yourself and just in empowered and inspired, great. That's amazing. But if you leave ha them hanging out and you're giving your energy and you're feeling drained and you know, as light workers, because we know we're here to help the collective, sometimes we end up, I'm going to say this bluntly, sometimes we end up wasting our energy on like one or two people who are just like hooked into our, I imagine like a, <laughs> like a, a plug, like it's, they're just like plugging into us and draining our, our life force energy. And this all sounds very dramatic, but I would rather make a podcast and share this message with you of empowerment and alignment and have it reach thousands of people then sit and talk to a random girl in a coffee shop who can recognize that I can help her you know what I mean like the energy exchange I have to be careful of of where I put my energy so this is why especially after this last lunar eclipse I've been really putting this message out that you have to be fiercely protective of your energy because when you do this and you you can consciously choose to be of service to the people that you love, like, you know, to family members who are, who need you and like you can consciously choose. So just make sure it's a conscious choice. And then when you do that, you're not disempowering yourself. And also to when it doesn't feel like you want to do that, to really be in alignment and speak up for yourself. And all you have to do is say, I, I choose to spend more time for myself right now. I need to, I need to take care of myself right now. And anyone who's not honoring you wanting to honor yourself, they probably shouldn't be in your life anyway. So if they're emotionally trying to manipulate you after you claim that boundary, that's not okay. Um, and the reason why I'm saying all of this is because so many of us crave this really deep, authentic connection, especially us light workers who are like here for this big mission. I remember so many of my years I was running around like kind of just waiting for someone to bring up the subject of spirituality and waiting for them to lead on the conversations. Then I felt safe and I felt like, oh, there's permission for me to actually be myself here right now. This is why a lot of you really love the podcasts I make, the ones that Faraday make, because we are just fully authentically ourselves, fully understanding who we are in the timeline. And so when you're hanging out in that energy, you can also be like, yeah, yeah, I got you. Like, yeah, I understand because I'm like that too. And like, there's a lot of resonance that happens. In order for us to feel this resonance in our everyday life with our 
in-person community, like the people that you hang out with, you know, in person, it's important for you to take up space of who you actually are and what you actually talk, like what you care about talking about. So this is, I'm inviting you with the people that you're hanging out with right now to bring up a podcast like this or anything spiritual that you're really excited about and lead on the conversation with them. Lead on the idea of, I'm really excited, I'm learning about this thing, this is making me realize who I am in the timeline. This is me and what I believe is my authentic self right now in this version of me. I'd love to share it with you. Instead of, especially women, we do this a lot. We just wait for someone else to, to like start the conversation. And then we're like, oh, yeah, yeah, I have, I have like 50,000 things to say. And I read all these books about it. But like, why didn't we just, why didn't you just bring this up, you know? And as I realized this, like in my life, I started just being like super weird, like what other people would, what myself in mainstream society would consider very weird. And even when I started making these podcasts, like a year and a half ago, I was very much censoring myself, like not really speaking about the energy work that I do and my experiences with psychedelics and, you know, me feeling like a full on witch in the timeline and just being very in tune with my spirituality and very psychic in a lot of ways that I still haven't shared with you. And that's okay because some of those, they just come when they need to, but other of those I've started to get really loud about because I realize that when I do this, then it gives you permission to be yourself in whatever way that means. Like I've been reading this really good book called, um, bridging two realms and it's all about like unlocking your psychic abilities and so many of us have like we all have psychic abilities a lot of them have been um shut down in our dna like our dna holds all of the codes of who we are and who we're going to be and who we were in the past it's like all of it all of life dna it's all one big la 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 and <laughs> there's many things I could say right now, but basically our DNA has been deactivated in the past in our timelines. And this is why people a lot of times say like, oh, um, we're only using like 10% of our brain. We're actually not. It's more that our DNA has been deactivated and our DNA holds like the capacity of who we are and who we can be in this timeline and basically like if you want to think about it and like it's basically like we are all superheroes and what we see in like movies but we don't realize it because we've been like locked down and put to sleep our dna has been put to sleep and so when you start looking into activating your dna you start realizing oh fuck i have a lot of psychic abilities you can do this in a conscious way where you're like reading things or you can do it in the way that Bashar talks about, which is following your highest excitement because both of them lead to the same place. What you're really doing is getting yourself on a specific vibration where you're more in tune with the spiritual world and you're realizing that it's always been there. Like we are always connected and we're just starting to be aware of it more like all the synchronicity that already exists. And when you start realizing the synchronicity that already exists, you can start playing the game of life in a more conscious way, in a more fun way. Or at least I find it fun. Some people just wake up and they want to be like, let's just see what happens today. I have a lot of friends like this where they're just like, chaos, chaos, chaos. And then I make the best of it. And it's a really great story. And I'm like, I want to meditate and understand the timeline. And I get a lot of dreams about what's going to happen tomorrow and what's coming next in the collective. Like when COVID happened, I could feel it six months before. Like I could just feel this. I could just feel it in my energy field that something major was going to happen in the news and it was going to affect my everyday life. And it was also going to affect my travel because I didn't consciously recognize all these things, but subconsciously I booked my flights in a way where I was trying to travel as much as I could before March I didn't know why but I like literally went to almost every continent like all the major ones Africa America South America and Europe and I started in Thailand so I did all of those things within three months um, and then my soul told me 
you need to get the fuck back to Thailand. And I got back here two days before the country lockdown. And I was here on the island for lockdown in the most magical place in the world where we didn't actually have COVID on the island at all for the whole first year. So we were just running around like little kids playing. Um, so why did I start talking about that? I don't know. I'm trying to share with you, like, these are things that I talk about with my friends every day. These are things I talk about with Faraday every day. And these are things that I'm actively excited to talk more about. And I feel like the more of us that realize this is just normal, and this is just where we're going as a collective, uh, that we're all unlocking all these abilities. Okay, I said as a collective, but like we all are having our opportunities. This is what is really interesting about the splitting prism and the splitting timelines. I don't know if you've heard of this, but I'm going to break something down for you. So our bigger part of our soul is eternal. It is everlasting. And a small part of it because we cannot hold all of us in these physical bodies, all the energy that we actually are. So a small part of it is focused here in this timeline. So we are actually projecting a part of our bigger soul's consciousness into this timeline. And this is why when you are born, you choose to forget. You choose to forget who you are f for various reasons, but one of them that I'll focus on now is so that you can decide who you choose to be with free will. And your higher self, the bigger part of your soul that isn't here, it has a timeline laid out for you. But you get to choose how you play that timeline out in this physical timeline with your free will. And if you don't end up learning the lessons that your bigger part of your soul, which is actually you, the bigger part of you has laid out, then you'll, you'll figure it out in the next timeline or the next one or the next one, the next lifetime. So it's all one big game, right? And right now, this is why I always say this is such a transformational age, is that normally the growth that we have within our timeline only happens like within ourselves, right? Like we are experiencing what our soul has planned out for us. Right now, on a collective mass consciousness level, the whole earth is going through a... A, a major transformational age of consciousness, like literally raising our vibration into a different dimension um, and different density. There's many people who say 3D, 5D, whatever, it me whatever resonates with you, we're basically going somewhere we have never gone before. <laughs> I feel like that's a quote from somewhere. Um, and this is fairly exciting because you have your own personal timeline. This is why I always say like so many souls are trying to be born into the timeline right now because there's, there's your personal growth that you are on and then there's the collective growth that you're witnessing and you get to be part of. And you get to choose how big of a part you are playing in this collective raising of our consciousness vibration. And this is why it's really important to stay focused and to not get distracted and to not be in the fear and to choose unconditional love and to choose this because the vibration that we are shifting to if we choose because this is the choice you can also choose to stay in the old vibration to stay in the old density and this is why it's such a big deal to be born right now because you don't have just your personal life choices but you have like your collective life choices. Like you can literally shift with a part of the population that is going to stay in third density and choosing fear and choosing war and choosing all of the choosing to grow their consciousness in a way that is painful for them in a negative way. We'll just put like negative, negative separation, disconnection, or you can choose to focus your consciousness in the vibration, that's why I always say unconditional love, because that is the vibration of where we're moving into. So if you're able to be in union with yourself, to be in alignment with yourself, to feel love for, and, and unconditional love, in my view, is understanding. It's acceptance, understanding, and honoring of each individual on their specific life path. So some people tell me like, I have a really hard time being in unconditional love for like a murderer or someone who's hurting people. And it's like, I honor that. And also for me, unconditional love is 
is realizing that hurt people hurt people and someone like whenever I see someone who's like being really mean or aggressive or something I'm always like who hurt you like someone hurt you and now you're choosing to be the perpetrator you're choosing to be the one hurting and so when we can shift our our alignment to this bigger understanding that this is just cycles playing out then we can become kind of like the mom and dads in the timeline like on a spiritual level because I view a lot of people as like kids who are just imagine kids in the playground and they're just like wow you pulled my hair and then I'm gonna pull your hair and then you hurt me so I'm gonna hurt you like this is most of the collective this is most humans just like spiritually children and just working from this framework of like fight or flight or fear or just like these vibrations that are just like very reactionary instead of being in your grounded place and understanding the bigger picture like for instance when a toddler is throwing a tantrum around a parent of course the parent is going to have feelings about that but the parent is also not going to hurt the kid or be mean to the kid because they realize the bigger picture of what's happening and how by them setting the right example and the right vibration and reaction to their child you know, throwing a fit, throwing a tantrum, then they can actually shift the child into a higher vibration because they are the ones leading the way. This has been a big lesson for me to learn, like especially being born into a family dynamic that was very abusive because I spent a lot of years like with my dad literally telling me like, I did this because you did this. Like my dad was actually a child <laughs> when I was a child and so I didn't really have the opportunity to learn what it was like to like be around people who were actually parents in the way that I'm speaking about parents right now so if you were also around this and you didn't have like a good role model I'm telling you what this is basically like as light workers we are here on a spiritual level to be the mom and dads of the collective and what that means is to just be really grounded and to understand that it's all working out and we care about everyone and that they have everyone has their free will and we're doing the best we can to set the vibration of love and understanding and acceptance and the more that we're able to do this with these people that our spiritual children the more they have the opportunity to to kind of look up at us and be like oh i can also react this way i have the choice i have the free will to also choose love and to choose a higher vibration in the way i'm responding to my life right now and when you look at people like buddha and jesus this is what they did like even when people were being crazy towards them they were still in this grounded like state of like or like mother teresa you know like there's many archetypes that you can look at in history and a lot of them came into the timelines sp as specific souls so that they can show us the vibration that we can choose to be on and you can spend a lot of your life being like no one around me is is doing that so i'm gonna wait for someone to lead the way and this is why even like faraday and i we have a lot of times where we're like we also want someone else to lead the way. Like, I wish there was someone that we could look up to. And of course, there's we have mentors and we have people that we we really value their opinion. And at the same time, we can feel that there could be a lot more of us. You know, there could be a lot more of us who are like, I choose to be the spiritual parent in the timeline right now. I am setting my vibration. I am being loud about it so that other I can be a role model for other people. And I'm sharing all of this with you right now because when you crave this connection, when you crave this soul tribe, just like I crave, you have to be loud about who you are. You have to be your authentic self. You cannot go around, because that is being a spiritual kid. It's just like kind of waiting for someone to give you space, waiting for someone else to set the lead. It's like, it is time right now to be the leader. It's time to not be the follower and not wait for permission. And it's also time to figure out who you are specifically. I'm not saying that you need to do what Faraday and I do, which is make podcasts and we're on social media and we do coaching. You don't need to do that. You need to, f I mean, if that is your timeline and that's what makes you excited, awesome. We fully support that. We need way more of us 
who were in this position. But what I'm trying to say is if you have a different skill set and it in your mind it might not feel like a big deal, but this is what we actually need is for you to follow your authentic self, your truth and whatever your higher self is channeling to you and whispering in your soul that is your highest excitement of whatever you can offer the collective right now. And when I say offer the collective, it's such an interesting thing because a lot of times we feel like I need to be going and helping kids in Africa. I need to be like, you know, in a war-torn country right now. And it's like, if that is your highest excitement, go for it. That's amazing. But if your highest excitement, and also if your highest excitement is taking care of the nature where you grow up, you know, helping with the local animal shelter, painting, creating art in some way that is sharing about this new earth, this now earth vibration, doing something that is your highest excitement that is activating and raising the vibration of the collective around you. That is what we all need to be doing. And each of us have very specific skill sets that we can offer. Like for instance, I'll give you an example. Like Faraday yesterday was, you know, he, he edits my podcast and I really, really appreciate him for doing this. And at the same time, we, him and I are both, it is not our highest excitement to be on our laptops, like dealing with tech things, you know, like he, we both know how to do it. He's way better at it than I am but like different things that were happening behind the scenes of uploading the podcast and different things were like tech wise going wrong. And he was saying to me, Oh my gosh, I wish that we had someone in our community that could just take care of this. And it was their highest excitement and we can pay them and all this stuff. And I'm like, I'm sure we do have that. We just need to speak up for it. So this is also, we all need to speak up more and more what we can offer and what people need. Um, because, this is what I mean. It's like there's going to be a lot of skills that we can all help each other with that might not be being the front man, you know? And honestly, for many years, I didn't want to be the front man. I didn't want to be here making podcasts because I actually really like to just be in my home and have people come over and I make tea and I'm cozy and like, you know, like I'm I'm very much more of the mother archetype. Uh, this is what I'm settling into and it feels really nurturing for me. This is what I saw on ayahuasca that like my happy place is being in my home with my community with kids running around and animals running around and we're just making food and being cozy and talking about our emotions and feeling really yummy in our bodies. And at the same time, you see that I do not have a child. A lot of you ask me, do you want a kid right now? It's like, I would love to have a child when the timeline is safe for me when I feel safe in my body to have a child, a physical child. I also believe in hybrid children. If you don't know anything about that, you can reach out to me and I'll, I'll send you some stuff, some, a lot of spiritual information about hybrid kids. So there's, what am I saying? But I'm here making a podcast because I feel it's really important. It's really, really important that I keep making these. I feel like I get this every morning. Like this morning I woke up, I was feeling a little bit lonely. I was feeling like I would really love to have my tribe here, my specific tribe that I feel so at home with, the ones I see in my my dreams and I see in my ayahuasca ceremony and I have them in my life and they're just not physically here and it's okay because there's a reason for that. And also another reason for that is that I sit here and make a podcast because you know, sometimes there's the time for building and growing and like being in what I call mission mode. And there's other times where we are, we are, you know, more in the receptive, more in the feminine. Like right now, this is would I would consider this being me more in my masculine energy by me sharing externally, putting energy out into the collective. And that's okay. This is what being in divine union with myself is. I can balance both of those. Um, I feel like I went on many tangents there. But my main thing to you is it's okay if you don't feel like you have your tribe with you. We all are feeling this in a lot of ways. And also it's okay if your tribe shifts, if the people that you love, you want to create more space for new people who are on the vibration and the interest and the soul mission that you have. And you can still keep the other ones in your life if they are empowering for you. And also just spend more time alone. So you're really setting your vibration of who you are because sometimes we get 
very clouded and distracted by all the other people in our life, even if we love them very much. And also to start speaking up and reaching out to people that you feel are on a similar soul mission. People like this is what makes us feel connected right now. A lot of this is happening online and that's okay because in the future it will happen in person and it's okay for both. I love both. I like more offline, honestly, but I love both because at least it exists, you know, at least we can feel it. It's all energy. You can feel it when you listen to this podcast. It's all energy. And just keep going, keep being your authentic self, keep raising the vibration in whatever way is your highest excitement and just stay in the knowingness that we are on the most epic adventure right now together. We're doing this together as a collective and those of us that are choosing to shift into the higher vibration, into the higher density, we are doing it together. And the more I can, I can feel it even in the last six months, a lot of us are finding each other. A lot of us are collaborating. A lot of us are reaching out. Even for me, I'm getting even more bold about who I am online. And the more that I do this, the more people, you know, are coming to me that are like, Hey, I'm also like you. Hey, I totally resonate with you. And a lot of you reach out and say this, that's really exciting. Um, and I invite you to, to put yourself out there in whatever way feels good for you. It doesn't need to be making a podcast. It can, if that's exciting, it can also be reaching out to me, reaching out to other people that you follow that are really exciting for you, joining something, some retreat, some program, traveling to somewhere that, you know, like Koh Phangan or Bali or India, where people are more conscious, whatever is your highest excitement, I invite you to do. I'm sending you guys all so much love and I hope you have an amazing day and I will see you in the next podcast.